So in this video, I'm going to show you how to start your self-portrait, how to start actually drawing it. Once you have the grid and the A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, down this side, and then you have the same thing on your drawing paper, the A, B, C, and the one, two, three down the side. Now it's time to start actually drawing. And you can start if you want. Let me. So this is, if you want, you can start up here and just kind of work your way this way. But what I like to do is I like to start, I like to pick a facial feature and then work my way from there. So I'm actually gonna start, I like this eye right here. So I'm gonna start with this eye. And, and here's, I'll show you a mistake that a lot of people make because they have the grid. When you take your self-portrait or if you use a self-portrait somewhere else, you notice that Al Pacino's face isn't perfectly straight. Like here's the middle line. If I line up my pencil with, with the middle of his face, you can see that my pencil is cutting across my grid. So people fight with their eyes. They try to make their eyes in the same square. And they say, well, my eyes aren't crooked. Well, no, but your whole head is. And that's like not an insult, like your, your head is just tilted. So your eyes are not always gonna be perfectly level. So here's like, if I go, if I put my pencil between his pupils, you can see that according to my grid, they're kind of, they're, they're a little skewed. So don't fight it, trust the grid. So I'm gonna start in square. So it's letter F. three, three F. So I'm going to go to three F, which is right here. And I'm going to just try to draw the shapes that I see. I'm not trying to draw his eye. I'm just trying to draw the shapes that I see. So sometimes it helps actually. I'm going to take my ebony pencil and I'm going to outline the darkest values that I see. So I'm outlining just those like absolutely black areas, the 10 value, maybe some nines. And then I'm going to outline, I see, so that's, that's it for the absolutely dark values. But then he's got this highlight here and I'm going to, I'm going to outline that too. And actually when I do that, I shouldn't have my drawing paper underneath. So I'm going to outline that highlight in his eye. I'm going to outline this shadow underneath his eye. And then in the corner here, there's a little bit of shadow from his nose. And then over here, it's like a shadow from like his eyebrow kind of like the, the corner of the top where his like upper sinuses are. And then it goes from, like it very dark, there's a little bit of a highlight and then it darkens back up. So I'm gonna outline those spots where those values change. And there's a little bit of a shape right here. So that's like the white part of his eye. And then I see some like darker values, there's like a a wrinkle or a vein that runs through there. So let's see if you can see what, so you can, you can see how I've outlined those things. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my drawing and I'm going to draw those lines. Again, using my grid, three, three F, Let's see if this, there we go. So three F and so that top of his eye, here, I'll fold this so that you can actually see what I'm drawing. So again, this is a little bit bigger too. My drawing is a little bit bigger than my picture. Let's 
And the corner of his eye kind of lands in here somewhere. There we go. And it's, it's got a thickness to it. And it kind of comes up like that. So I'm just looking at what shapes I see. And another thing you notice is that I'm not doing, I'm not drawing lines that look like this either. I'm not doing the, I mean, I'm drawing lightly and I'm going multiple passes, but I'm not, not doing those sketchy lines. That kind of comes. It swings down a little bit. Like that. And I'm going to. does something like that and then the bottom goes like that So I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. So that's what my drawing looks like. Um, I'm going to draw. So the more outlines like this that I can draw, the easier it's going to be. And if you get to a spot where there's a lot going on, so this next square, there's a lot going on. So what I can actually do is break it, draw like a window, break it into quarters, and then do the same thing over here. So I'm basically doing another grid just a smaller grid. So if there's too much information in a one by one square, you can make your grid smaller. dark part kind of comes like that and then it kind of fades over here in here it, it it goes from from being very black to like a nine or an eight gray value but I noticed that this square square g3 is much darker than this square. There's more highlights in here. That line kind of continues, but then it goes up. 
and it kind of does something like that. And then this shadow gets very dark here. And it kind of, like it's a shadow and then it comes around. He's got a whole bunch of like smile lines. So it kind of looks like a almost like a spider web texture. And it goes off that square. And it goes up and kind of just blends out that way. And then this, there is, I'm going to put a little bit of a mark. So it goes from like a, I don't know, I'd call it like a, right here. I don't know if you can see that, but it goes from like a, probably like an eight to like a seven. So that's why we did all that shading is to help you see individual values to see more than just black white and gray but to actually see all the variations all the the middle grays in between so this as crappy as that looks that's al pacino's eye so i'm going to shade that for you i'm going to show you how i'm going to go about shading that so i'm going to start with the darker areas and I'm, now I'm using my ebony pencil. I'm gonna get the darkest spots in first. And my wife is coming down the stairs. Hello, I'll be up in a minute. Hurry up and finish this so that I can see the baby because she's adorable. And something that's going on here with his eye that I notice is that his eye, his pupil kind of does. I, I didn't measure, I didn't mark where the absolute black area is. It kind of blends out. And I think I just accidentally shaded over that. So we'll see what happens. I mean, this, like I said, G3 is pretty dark anyways so this is still not it's it's not white even though it is the white of his eye it's not it's kind of got a, a middle grayness to it and then there's like a, I missed something here. So this is like a lighter gray right in here. And then this comes down.
and around. So I've not drawn, I mean, I have some shapes, but you notice that I'm not, let's see if I can zoom in here for you. Like that doesn't really look like an eye. So if you're drawing something, if you're drawing your eye or this is like when we did the blind contour line drawing to try to separate, your brain is going to tell you that you're drawing an eye, it should look like an eye. And that is the biggest battle you are going to fight during this assignment. Your brain is going to want this so badly to look like an eye that it's going to try to sabotage your drawing. Don't let it. Try to draw only what you see. And me, after having done this a bunch of times, I know that I can trust my eyes. I know that you know me and my eyes can team up against my brain and tell my brain to just be quiet. And I know it's going to work out. But for you, if you've never done this before, and your brain is going to be yelling at you, telling you that you're not good at drawing, your brain's going to try to take over. It's going to try to take over and tell your tell your hand what it should be drawing. But I'll tell you this, if you're not good at drawing, it's not because of your hand, it's because of your brain. Because your brain thinks it knows everything. But for this assignment, just let your let your hand trust your eyes. Draw what you see. Now it looks it almost looks like a moose or something. And if you see other stuff like that in your drawing, that's okay. I see other stuff in my drawings all the time. I'll draw something, it'll remind me of something else. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. So now I've started to get into that next area. And I don't want to do that. I'm not going to I'm going to start going on that area yet. But I do got to finish putting in these values. And I was just telling somebody earlier today, like, you don't have to draw. If this area right in here is supposed to be, uh, like, a, a, a six value or a five value, I don't have to do it in one swoop. I can start slow. And as long as my pencil's moving across the paper, it's making it darker. There's that. And this is still kind of dark. And now I'm going to use, I'm going to shade in the direction of that eyelid. So I know what I'm drawing. So I can kind of help myself out. I don't know. I'm going to take my handy dandy blender. Soften that up. Gray this in here. And then, uh, let's see, this was a little bit darker, but not much. Not much. I don't want to make that too dark. There we go. And then 
this. Came all the way through. that now even this I'm gonna put a little bit of value in here maybe that's a two value Oops. now it's starting to look like an eye so now in here I got to add these bit darker but not super dark on that spot this this is pretty dark right in here then it kind of softens up blends out and then even in here it kind of I think that's a little bit darker right there. But then even even that is to middle gray. And I should have grabbed my needed eraser, but I didn't. Uh, I'm gonna use my eraser on my Ticonderoga. Feel like I might have darkened that in a little too much. I'm gonna fix it. And that is, there we go. Oop. I don't want to have a little. Uh, that, that, that was a little bit of my eraser. I, my, man, I want to make sure that I don't accidentally do that. Because if I start to blend and I got a little eraser worm underneath there I'm gonna start erasing stuff that I really want to be blending and that sometimes can be catastrophic and there we go this is a little bit darker here A little bit darker here. And I feel like I didn't get Didn't get dark enough over here. This should be, this should be much darker. And you'll see once I get this, as I darken this in, that, and this, all those areas that are a little bit lighter, those well, are going to start to start to stand out big time. That's what's going to give your your uh, your face. Form. That's what's going to make it look like a three-dimensional thing. Uh, it's those those highlights and those shadows. There you have it. That's an eye of Al Pacino. And that's how you do your self-portrait or just a portrait using a grid. So if you have questions, let me know. Good luck. Have fun.